Finally, Zoom have a new whiteboard. We've been waiting for a long time for a Zoom to update its whiteboard. Let's be honest, what Zoom was offering so far was really basic. And I don't even remember the last time I've been using its whiteboard. On April 18, 2022, Zoom have released their new whiteboard. It's not just a refresh of their existing whiteboard, but it's a brand new product that aims at expanding the use of the whiteboard making it a true collaboration tool that in the future may even become a standalone product that will compete with state-of-the-art whiteboards like Miro, Mural or Klaxoon. It's not linked to a specific meeting and it can be accessed for asynchronous collaboration also before or after a meeting. So let's first go explore the new Zoom whiteboard and then at the end of the review I will draw my conclusions. There are three ways to access the new Zoom whiteboard. From the desktop client, from the web client and from within a Zoom meeting. The first thing to notice that is different from the previous version of the whiteboard is that before the whiteboard was a tool thought just for in-meeting use, whereas now the whiteboard can be accessed and contributors can collaborate on it independently, even if they're not attending a meeting. I'll now open a new Zoom meeting. You will now see a new icon saying whiteboards. Click on it and this is where you will see all your existing whiteboards. Since this is the first time I'm using it, I only have the option to create a new whiteboard, which is what I'm going to do right now. At the bottom left, I can decide whether I want to allow attendees to access the whiteboard after the meeting. And at the bottom right, I can decide what participants can do with the whiteboard, whether they can edit it or only view it. Let's create a new whiteboard by clicking on Open and Collaborate. The whiteboard interface looks quite familiar to the other whiteboards we're used to, with a white canvas and the toolbar on the left. Since I'm using the whiteboard in the meeting, at the top right I can still choose the view options. If I select Standard, then I'll maximize the view of the whiteboard. Let's now start exploring the different tools. At the top there is the Selection tool, not much to say on it, then there is the Draw tool, with pen and highlighter options, and where we can choose three thicknesses, thin, regular, and thick. With the selection tool, I can select multiple objects at the same time. I can move them around and make them larger or smaller by dragging and dropping the handles. The next one is the shape tool. There's a rectangle shape where we can have only the outline. We can also insert text, make it semi-transparent, or fill it with eight color options. Clicking on the three dots, we have access to more options. Copy, paste, duplicate, and then options to arrange the object. So let's try to copy paste the shape and duplicate it. Pretty straightforward. And I'll change the color to purple and rearrange the objects by putting the red one on top. Besides the rectangular shape, we also have three other object shapes. The next tool is the line. We have a simple line, an arrow and double arrow. The next tool is the text one. It's a text box without background color and without outline. We can make it bold, italic or underlined and align it to left, right or center it. We can also change the size and the color, but we can't change the font and don't have access to more advanced formatting. The next tool is the sticky note. Clicking on it will place a sticky note on your whiteboard. You can add text to the sticky note and format it in a similar way to what we've seen before with the text tool. Again, we can resize it, duplicate it, change the color and do pretty much everything that we've seen so far. The next tool is the eraser. There are two kinds of erasers that we usually find in whiteboards. The first type erases pixel by pixel, whereas the second one erases whole objects. And that's the type we find in Zoom Whiteboard. So if we select the eraser tool and click on a shape, the whole shape will be gone. If you try to erase some drawing or a writing that we've done with the paint tool, then the eraser will delete everything that we've done in one stroke and not pixel by pixel. Underneath the color, undo and redo functions, you find the pages tool. In a Zoom Whiteboard, we can create up to 12 pages. So let's click on plus to add a blank new page. And let's add a new rectangle shape with some text in it. There's not much formatting possible on a text that's included in a shape. So if we want to format text, at least to some extent, we have to add it with the text tool. The zoom function goes down to 25% and up to 300%. Once you've created more pages, you can always go to the pages tool and select the page you want to navigate to. 
A whiteboard can be shared with other collaborators, even if they're not on the call, by adding their email address. Or it can be exported in PDF or PNG format. So let's try to export it in PDF. This will create a PDF document with two pages, one for each whiteboard page. I think I've covered pretty much everything. The only missing thing is the highlighter, so let's give it a try, but it's pretty straightforward. Many other whiteboards have this kind of shape drawing assisted tool, but here if I try to draw a straight line, a circle or a triangle, these will not convert automatically into smart shapes. Let's now see what the whiteboard experience looks like for a participant that is logging into the meeting with an iPhone. Here on the right you see the recordings of the MacBook Pro participant screen, whereas on the left you see the screen of the iPhone participant. When the MacBook Pro host participant clicks on whiteboard, then the selected whiteboard will appear also on the iPhone participant screen, without the need of performing any additional share screen action. The first thing that becomes clear on the iPhone is that you can only view whiteboards on mobile, whereas if you want to collaborate and have the full experience, this works only if you use a desktop or tablet. Probably they'll change this in the future. But for now, this is what it is. The first thing to notice is that the navigation of the whiteboard can't be locked, meaning that if the host moves around the whiteboard, then the view for the mobile participant won't change according to the host view. So for example, if I, as the host, move to a part of the whiteboard where I'm certain some text, I should not expect the mobile participant to see what I'm doing, because he or she may be looking at the different part of the whiteboard. If you're liking this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button so more people will have the chance to watch it. This really helps me spreading the content and growing my channel. Thank you. So we've seen that as a participant, I can independently move around the board. But what if there are multiple pages? Well, participants can even choose the page and go to a page that is not the one where the host is working on. This is totally fine if different collaborators are doing asynchronous work. But unless I'm missing something at this point that the whiteboard has just been released, I find it a bit strange that the host cannot focus the view of all participants on the page and on the part of the page that the host is working on. Okay, can I open another whiteboard while I'm in the same meeting? Well, actually, yes. Just click on whiteboards, a new whiteboard, and then open and collaborate. But with all this new stuff, what happened to the old whiteboard? Is it still there? Let's go find out. As we used to do, let's click on share and the old whiteboard is still there, with the same functions we were used to. But my guess is that it will soon disappear. Ok, our Zoom meeting is finished. Where can we find the whiteboard? If you now go to your desktop client and click on the new whiteboards icon, that's where you'll find your whiteboards. There are different tabs where you can find all whiteboards, your whiteboards, whiteboards that have been shared with you, start whiteboards, if you want to mark more important whiteboards, for example, and at the bottom you'll find the trash. A whiteboard can be shared, locked, added to the start ones, renamed, duplicated or moved to trash. So is that all? On purpose I didn't want to read any instruction, because I wanted to see whether I was able to find out all the features by myself. Let's now go to the Zoom blog and read the article that is listing all the features of the new Zoom whiteboard. To my surprise, the first thing that I see it's a picture of the whiteboard that looks a little bit different from the version that I've seen in the live meeting. There's an image icon that was not present in the whiteboard that I opened, and the whiteboard background has dots, which I didn't see in the Zoom meeting. It's no big deal, but maybe this is a hint that a type of background can be chosen. We can also see the name of contributors. I didn't see that because probably I logged in with my mobile and I was only able to view the whiteboard, not to collaborate on it. And the same applies to this comment here. Another thing I didn't notice is the possibility to give it reactions to sticky notes, as we see here. So actually, these are quite a few things. So let's keep reading. I'll jump to the list of the whiteboard features and see what I find here. The image tool is there, and it says that I can upload a JPEG or PNG file. Another feature I missed in the in-meeting whiteboard are connectors and access points. Objects can be connected and they can also be rotated. That's a bit strange that I didn't see it. Then there's the comment tool. It says that to attach a comment to an object, the comment icon at the top right should be clicked. But if I open the whiteboard again, there's no comment icon. So since I'm working with a free account, are some functions maybe limited to paying accounts? Well, if I go to the different plans, 
it doesn't seem that there is a difference in terms of features between the basic and pro plans. So I'm a bit puzzled. There's only one thing I haven't tried so far. I've created and opened a whiteboard from a meeting and from the desktop client. But I didn't try to open the whiteboard from the web client. So let me give it a try. If you go to the whiteboard tab at the top right, then a similar menu that we found on the desktop client will appear. I'm finding here the two whiteboards that I have created. So let's open one of them and see what happens. To my big surprise, things changed. The image tool is now there. So let me try to add an image. And I can even rotate it. When an object is selected, I now see extra points. And if I drag a point and drop it on a point of another object, then I'll establish a connection between these two points. And if an object is moved around, then the connector will follow it. All of this seems to be working only if I access the whiteboard from the web client. And let's at least for me working on a Mac with a free account. If I now open a Zoom meeting, click on whiteboards, and then access the whiteboard that I've just modified, I'm finding the picture that I've inserted from the web client application. Objects are keeping their rotation, but the connector's links seem to be broken. That's strange and it's definitely something that Zoom has to fix. So is the new Zoom whiteboard as good as the state-of-the-art whiteboards in terms of user experience and collaboration features? And is the new Zoom whiteboard really targeting the same audience as the other advanced whiteboards? After this first review, I can summarize my conclusions in a few points. First, Zoom is finally offering a whiteboard that is a real collaboration tool. The whiteboard works pretty well and offers a good user experience. The current available features are okay for simple collaboration, but Zoom still has some work to do to compete with the more advanced whiteboards. Some points where Zoom is still behind, just to name a few, are the absence of templates, the fact that there are no smart shapes, there is no timer, the only file type that can be added to the whiteboard are images, and text formatting is very limited. And to this I should add that some of the current features seem to be available only on the web client. So is the new Zoom whiteboard going to make some mirror or mural users switch to it? Well, I think that the target audience is partly different. If you're a trainer or facilitator and need the more advanced collaboration features that probably you won't be switching completely to Zoom. At this stage, Zoom is competing with the more simple whiteboards and probably addressing the same audience as the Microsoft whiteboard. The new Zoom whiteboard is integrated into Zoom meetings and is available for all accounts, even the free one with some limitations. If you're on the basic plan and you're not paying, then you can create up to three editable whiteboards, which is totally fine. However, one thing that surprised me is that this limitation also applies to the Pro account and is lifted only for the next year, the small business account. I see a potential issue here for freelance facilitators or small companies who are totally fine with the features of their Pro accounts, but may find the three editable whiteboards a big limitation. So what's your experience with the new Zoom whiteboard? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. So all in all, well done Zoom. They constantly keep adding new features that make our online meetings more productive and more engaging. I'm talking about the immersive view or sharing screen and audio to the breakout rooms, the introduction of advanced polls and quizzes, and many more features that you should definitely know. Reason why you should be watching this next video on the top 10 Zoom features that have been released in the past months. Click on it now. Now.